They say the global fashion industry is estimated to be worth $1.7 trillion. As Jews, we are heavily invested in clothing. There is an obligation to have special clothes for Shabbos and even more special clothes for the holidays. We even have a special garment when we pray called a talis. When we announce a program, people often ask me, how should I dress for this event? I used to have a more difficult time answering this question. In today's day and age, I say, as long as you're dressed, it's all right. But what is our obsession with clothing? Why is the industry so massive? What's wrong if everyone wore all the same things? Take dressing for a wedding just as an example. There are so many rules involved. The mother of the bride has to wear a special wedding gown. The sisters also have to have a special color gown to make them look extra special. But if you're only a cousin, you dare not come dressed too fancy. And if God forbid someone should mistake you as a sister, it may be a big insult to the immediate family. And there are so many rules for all of these occasions. A big chunk of this week's Torah portion, Tetzavah, is dedicated to clothing, specifically the special garments of the Kohen, the priest. Among these special are two types. There was the regular Kohen's outfit, made of four garments, and the high priest's special outfit, made of eight garments. On Yom Kippur, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies with only his white clothes on, only four garments. Rashi explains that it was actually the priestly uniform that made the priests fit to serve in the temple. And the Talmud adds that so long as the Kohen was in uniform, he was a priest. Once he removed his clothes, he was no longer fitting for priestly service. But we must ask the question, does it really make a difference what a person wears? Don't we always preach that being a mensch internally and behavior is the main thing? One's external appearance shouldn't really matter. Perhaps we can explain this by understanding that the significance of clothing goes much deeper than just protection from the elements. What distinguishes a human being from an animal is the fact that we are the only creature that wears clothes. Clothing represent the wearer. It's the first impression I give off to others. What a person wears has a very strong influence on us. The first clothing was made by God for Adam. Perhaps God was expressing to him that clothing isn't optional. Rather, it's like an addition to the created man. It's like a second, more noble layer of skin. Clothing is for human dignity. Nakedness is for beasts. Before Hasidim pray, they gird themselves with a special belt called a gartel. This belt doesn't cover any skin. It's simply meant to remind the worshiper before whom he is about to pray, before the King of all kings, the Holy One, blessed be He. This belt separates the higher, vital organs, such as the heart, the lungs, and the brain, from the lower, less refined organs. The symbolism is that when praying, one must direct his heart upwards towards God in heaven, not downward. But perhaps above all, the main lesson we can learn from our need for clothing is that we were created in the image of God and therefore we must never be satisfied with our physical existence. We constantly strive to rise above the physical and to elevate our lives. We live in an era where the excuse of, what do you want from me? This is how God made me. Or this is my nature is rampant. We must not succumb to this toxic mindset. It is an injustice for a human being to say this. Nature is naked, instinct is unrefined. Just as we need nice clothing to cover our bodily nakedness, we need a refined cover for our natural instincts. We can work on ourselves to become better at everything. If we strive to beautify ourselves, we will. And when we do so, everyone in our life will enjoy us more and complement our dignity. Clothing has a special infinite quality. There is a limit to what you can eat, but ask any woman if there is a limit to how many pairs of shoes one can own. One can keep on changing and changing outfit after outfit as long as you live. So as we read in this week's parsha about the priestly garments, let us be mindful of our own nature and habits and try to improve upon and beautify what comes to us naturally. I wish you a good Shabbos.